you're anything like me, you love thinking about how life used to be in the olden days. So naturally, I was excited to learn that a blacksmith lives off-grid downriver from me. Between experiencing someone practicing the age-old craft of blacksmithing and using the river and a canoe as my main means of travel to reach them, just like people would have done, I figured this was a great opportunity to step back in time. But getting there doesn't come without a fair dose of adventure. Today is gonna to feel like we are going back in time a little bit because I'm paddling a canoe, which obviously people have been doing for thousands of years, even right here on this river. And I'm going to visit a blacksmith who lives off grid down river from me. And I am starting this trip right from my front yard. I'm going to visit a local blacksmith by canoe. Stay tuned and find out what we make. It's gonna be pretty exciting. I'm gonna have a bow and stern airbag and what those are for is in case your canoe fills up with water while you're running rapids it won't sink so deeply and even more importantly if you do dump those airbags will float your canoe higher in the water and it'll be much easier to rescue now I'm gonna paddle probably about a five hour paddle I'm gonna do some fishing on the way north might not be coming with me on this one because he's had the runs really bad and we just want to keep an eye on him um, I'm taking my Nova craft supernova which is an awesome whitewater boat this is what we got to start out with a little class one and I'm gonna jump right into it we got a hot day today it's beautiful out so I'm jumping on my home river to solo my canoe down all the whitewater rapids to visit the local blacksmith. Also, I'm super excited to be testing out my new whitewater paddle by H2O Paddles. These are made right here in Ontario, Canada. Top of the line paddles. Brought my fishing rod along. Hopefully you can catch some pike or pickerel. No spray deck. You're bound to take in a little more water, more bailing. Yeah, love the paddle already. Supernova is just so maneuverable. Got a little swift coming up here. This section of the Magnetowan River was typically bypassed completely. Just up river for me, there's a waterfall, a long stretch of low, shallow rapids, and then an intense bouldery rapid, uh, plus these two swifts, um, and uh, another rapid down there, and then finally a waterfall. And um, back in the day, people were often traveling uh, at lo much lower water levels when the rapids would have been too bony to paddle. Uh, they would have been traveling in bark canoes and eventually canvas canoes that couldn't take the beatings. They've been traveling, you know, without the kind of waterproof bags we have today with expensive trade goods or their entire family. So uh, traditionally, this entire stretch of river was bypassed. There's a big bay. It's almost like a lake in of itself, but uh, it's a large bay that branches off the Magnetowan. And uh, if you paddle to the end of that bay, you can actually cheat your way past the waterfall and the first few rapids and then jump on a long portage trail that bypasses all these rapids. So you're portaging around sections of river that are like this, that are easy, but at the end of the day, you save time and it's a lot safer. Um, and that's a really interesting portage trail, you know, probably over a thousand years old.
Well, it's going to be pretty tricky at the top for sure. Uh, I can't fit through that tight little slot with those two kind of flat rocks. The left is just too shallow. It's just pouring over a rock sheet. So I'm going to have to kind of find a line right there that kind of goes just left of those rocks and just right of these ones. Then I'm going to have to get left hard and then I'm going to have to get right hard. So uh, nothing crazy, but pretty technical. Uh, should be a fun rapid. Uh, I didn't check further down river, which I probably should have. So we might run into a few uh, reactionary surprises down there. We'll see. You can see there that's a ledge and it just drops off and it's sheer rock. ideal. There's a rock there, I'm like left, right, left, right. I should have just chosen a way and going for it, but honestly, going right into that hole was the safest way to totally avoid the big boulder, so it's kind of, I think, what I instinctually did. That was fun though. Got a little bit hairier at the end, just as expected. It's got to come in real slow here. If I miss Daddy, I get swept over the waterfall. Actually, not much of an eddy here at all. this biting here is bass and bass are out of season so I'm gonna move on uh, I don't really have a ton of time to fish unfortunately but hopefully I get a few more casts in all right we got a little swift here uh, and uh, a sweeper which is just like a down tree in the current which can be dangerous and uh, a little class one but I'm not sure what it's gonna be like at these water levels but I want to be prepared should be fun um, good to get that portage out of the way and uh, got a little flat water paddling after the swift and then a doozy of a rapid hopefully it's not too rocky to run but we will see so definitely some anxiety building in my chest about that one.
old garbage dump here. But there probably used to be a cabin around here. Could have been from the logging days. Whenever you're uh, uh, around a rapid or a falls or something that's an obstruction in the river to a canoe, but also been a major obstruction to uh, log drives, to logs being floated down river. So oftentimes on rivers where they did log drives, which is the vast majority of, of them in uh, the Great Lakes forests and beyond, um, you can find old relics. Sometimes you'll just see grass. I don't know why people used to bring in grass. Maybe they brought in some livestock. Um, who knows why? Uh, you know, you'll see grass, you'll see garbage, you'll see old logging chains, sometimes the, uh, sometimes the remains of old cabins, all these things. Um, but uh, yeah, if you have a keen eye, you can see kind of these things from the days of old. And uh, there's definitely some signs of that in the bush along this rapid. Woo! She looks pretty intense. Oh my goodness. It looks uh, potentially unrunnable. Looks like a huge hole at the bottom. Uh-oh. If I go into that hole, my goose is cooked. If I go into these boils there, I'll dump for sure too. So I think I'm just gonna freaking bomb the middle. I might swamp and dump, but we'll see what happens. But I think I'm gonna try to take that hole on the left. Hopefully that curling side wave doesn't flip me to the right. Um, good chance I get in there and it pushes me and flips me to the right, but I'll just have to be as prepared for possible. I'm gonna hit this big one here on the left. Hopefully get left of that main hole there. Try not to tip right and just Basically, try not to swamp. Good chance I swamped though, so fingers crossed. Could Definitely could use a spray deck for this one. Doing up my uh, north water thigh straps there. All right, here goes nothing. I could have avoided them actually. So I hit them, but I ended up overcompensating with that cross draw brace. Super fun run! Awesome! Woo! Not uh, totally used to this canoe yet. Sometimes it turns so well that it catches you by surprise. You can overcompensate. Uh, so yeah, it takes a little getting used to, but man, is it ever epic. Sideways a bit to take in a lot less water. 45 degree angle. You don't knife into them. Those waves back there, I went right into them. They're kind of boiling at the top. So I took in so much water. If I hit them at a bit more of an angle, I would have run it a little drier. There's no running that last one dry though. <laughs> There's no running that last one dry though. <laughs> Alright, the lake to paddle here. Nice stretch of river though. Not much development. Okay. We got something on. Oh, it's a huge bass. Out of season. Too bad we weren't fishing for huge bass here. But I don't I highly doubt it was on the map. 
Oh, there it goes. I guess you didn't get to have a look at that. I'm not trying to land these too hard because uh, ideally I don't even touch them. Okay, well, basically going to uh, inch down the side here and uh, try not to get swept over <laughs> the chute would be less than ideal. We'll take it far right and then get way over to the left. No problem. Ooh, looks tricky. Now I got a little bit of challenging bit of, bit of white water to manage. I got to uh, get down river and then get across against a strong current and hit a tongue because if I hit that part too far left, I'm gonna bomb into a hole and dump. So yeah, I'm gonna run it, woo! Probably hit that and get down that little tongue there. Too far left, I go into this, dump. Too far right, I smoked that raw. Looks like I could probably just bomb on the right. This curling wave probably is not big enough to give me too many problems. So I could go straight down there, but that's not nearly as much fun. I might just hit that hole for fun to see what happens, although at this point I'm a little late for the blacksmith, so a dump wouldn't exactly speed things up, we'll see. Um, but yeah, anyway, super excited to run this rapid, yeah!
and there he is that's Chris the blacksmith Chris Johnson waiting up for me a tad late hopefully he's not too annoyed you see where Chris lives not another soul in sight no development he just lives off grid down river from my house days paddle Hi Chris, how's it going? Good, Jim. How are you? Good. Thank you very much for having me back here yeah. and um, into your shop, canoeing, blacksmithing. You got it all here on the mag. It kind of feels like you know something people used to do in the olden days. This is where Chris works his magic, uh, and he prepares all the things you can find on his website, which is <laughs> um, black uh, cjblacksmith.ca. Um, also check Chris out on Instagram, adventure underscore forge. He posts pictures of some of the things he makes. And today um, we're going to be making, what are we going to be making, Chris? We're going to finish the squirrel cooker, which is just okay, a, yeah. a utensil for yeah. cooking over the fire, which yeah. we can't do right now because we're in a fire bay. We're in a fire bay, yeah. Um, and then uh, we can work on an outdoor fire poker. The thing that I am going to be picking up from Chris today is an outdoor fire poker. Um, for whatever reason, whenever I have a fire poker uh, set aside, it always ends up in a bonfire. So it's going to be really nice to have a metal one that I can sit there, looks really cool, and I can use for years to come. I'm going to put this swedge block here in the stand so we can form the end of the squirrel cooker house. I need you to swing a hammer. What are you doing there, Chris? Put my name in. Oh, that's your that's your uh, C Johnson. Yeah. So you've been using the axe? Oh yeah. Oh, again. Again. At the time, I had it. Okay, let's stop playing with that. Do three trips mm -hmm. across the portage. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I still do. This is a, a cooking utensil. Uh, called a squirrel cooker. We made this, we parted the end here and uh, created this cool little curve which is functional. Next thing we're going to do is make a stake that essentially sits into the ground and will allow us to either cook food that we stab onto this fork here such as a squirrel or hang a pot on the other side. Isn't that pretty cool? Okay, yeah. That's level. Boom. It's just sticks into the ground like so. You can rotate it or you can set it up this way and hang your pot from there. Cool. What are you doing there? This is cool. So I'm adding so basically they love the fact that they're cool. So that's coal. And when you're working, it turns into coke. So coal is like green wood. Coke is like charcoal. That would be the, that would be the new world.
into the forge, heat it up, pull it out, shape it. Back in the forge, heat it out, pull it up, shape it, right? Heat, heat, repeat. Heat. Cheating. Just using our oxyacetylene torch to uh, heat this up so you can twist it. Remember, buddy. This is the end of the fire poker here, and what that is is a coal raker. If you want to rake some of the coals out to cook over, well, you know, keeping some larger burning logs on the back side of the fire or whatever. Cool. <laughs> this is a 24 mm. footer. It's, oh, okay. It, you can, I can't stand up below deck. Maybe Vanessa could. I don't know. It's, uh, so you're actually going to sail on the thing? Oh, she's on freaking Perry Sound. Dude. So you could twist it, dog sled, and like, just like chop wood and cook in the, on the propane range and heat with wood. Tori, you showed up at the right moment. You all right? Glad you asked. You can get it outside. I got a hook. You can hang it on. You're gonna have a look at it there. Okay. Come check it out. Um, right when you pulled up, Chris just put the finishing touches on something. This is a, a fire poker, but it's also custom made to also be able to rake coals. So I figure you could use it at your workshops and stuff like that. But look what it says on it. That's really hot still. Look at it. Look <laughs> you hold it, it by the very end if you want. Oh, cool. That's it. The, oh, that's, that's so nice. That's hot there. Okay, so just at the end? Yeah. Okay. I'll get it dry. Oh, that's so cool. My own fire poker and raker. It's called a belated birthday present. That's really cool. Made by Chris. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Custom That's made. That's so cool. That's awesome. Thank you. You just pulled up as he was just going and put your name in. He's like, and then you pulled in. Oh, that's so cool. I know. Wild. There it is. So here we go. We have just finished what is a fire poker. And as you saw, it, it, it says Tori on it. Um, this is something that we're going to use at my house on our outdoor fire. We like to have outdoor cookouts where we cook over the fire. We do corn boil ups, fish fries, burgers, steaks, you name it with friends and we like to cook over the fire. Uh, the really cool thing about this, it's not just a fire poker, it's specially made as a coal raker. Look at that. So you can rake the coals back and it was really uh, a treat to watch Chris make this uh, down to the last detail. I mean, look at that. I mean, talk about functional art, you know. Um, so pretty, pretty cool and uh, awesome end to the day. So in the end, it did feel like I got to go back in time, taking the, you know, millennia old craft of the canoe down this river, which has been traveled on for many, many years, to visit a blacksmith. Felt kind of like something that people might have done around this area a hundred years ago or more. Pretty cool. But unfortunately and fortunately, we're not actually living in those times and Tori was able to drive here in the truck and pick me up so I don't have to paddle back up river. Pretty cool. Well, unfortunately there's a, pa a fire ban on right now so I can't use this right away but I'm looking really forward 
uh, to putting this to use. And um, yeah, I'm sure it'll be in the family for many years to come. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Is this your first year or second time? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, hey, bud. One. Film Wesley. Bye. 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 Film Wesley. Wadji. Hi, Wadji. Just push on. Hi, Wadji. Hi. Hi, Mama. I'm Jana. I don't want Mama. Up. 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 Down. Bye.